Kelly, Ambassador Catherine Tai spent years litigating trade cases against China at the World Trade Organization and today defended the Biden administration's strategy to leave tariffs in place while carving out exceptions for businesses with a specific economic impact and coordinating with allies to place additional pressure on Beijing. And in her first television interview, she says she's under no illusions China will change its ways, but she wants to re-engage before potentially catching. What is the risk that Beijing retaliates again? And what is the impact on the consumer if this policy creates further pressures on the supply chain, further price pressures on American consumers and businesses? Well, I want to take you back to something that's central about um, this administration uh, and uh, this USTR, which is um, the deep sense of responsibility that this team has to the well-being of Americans, American workers, and our entire economy. So in terms of setting out uh, the parameters for our um, uh, trade policy with respect to China, the goal is not to inflame the relationship or to inflame trade tensions. The goal is to be very clear-eyed and very clear in our communication to make as successful as possible our attempts to effectively realign this relationship in the interests of the American economy. The administration has had a policy that it will not raise taxes on Americans making less than $400,000. Do you think the tariffs indirectly uh, go against that pledge? No. Not at all? No. What, one of your other uh, pillars of your policy, as announced today, is to revisit the phase one agreement and discuss with your Chinese counterpart exactly where China uh, is falling short and where it maybe has met some of its goals. And I want to talk about the purchases specifically because the deal calls for China to purchase $253 billion of goods in the calendar year 2021. So far, the U.S. has exported just $82 billion. Is it possible that China could buy a bunch of Boeings or liquefied natural gas and make up that lost ground? Well, we won't know what's possible until we start talking. Is that something that you will be discussing with them, how they can close that gap before the end of the year? Well, um, certainly. And let me make one more point, which is um, the phase one agreement is a live agreement. And it covers more than tariffs and it covers more than purchase commitments. I completely understand why um, those pieces get a lot of attention. They have hard numbers attached to them and they have metrics uh, that people are very interested in tracking. Um, but this is the architecture of the relationship that we have right now. If you can't trust Beijing to meet the very specific financial targets that have been laid out in the deal, how can you trust Beijing to meet some of the more amorphous structural reforms that are targeted in this deal? Honestly, I don't know if I can trust Beijing until I talk to Beijing. But for that approach to work, there would need to be earnestness on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, President Xi has shown no signs that he is interested in improving the bilateral relationship or ceding any economic ground or military ground for that matter. Um, what sense do you get that this relationship can improve and can avert a potential decoupling or another type of conflict? So, Kayla, that seems awfully fatalistic, the starting point of your question. Um, again, I'll just say um, we don't know what we can accomplish until we try. Uh, and in terms of how we accomplish, I think that uh, that will be informed by uh, the tone and tenor of the conversations that uh, we have with China. In the direct talks that took place during the prior administration, the only women that were at the table were the translators. Do you fear that because of Chinese cultural norms that you won't be taken seriously as a woman leading the negotiations for the administration? Um, so much to unpack there, Kayla. Uh, you know what? I look forward to these conversations. And I would say with respect to Chinese cultural norms, um, you don't have a Chinese mother. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, I would say that uh, um, uh, I don't, uh, I don't fear Chinese cultural norms. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm really looking forward to these engagements because they are so important to how successful the United States will be in the coming years.